for all the saints who from their labors rest, who you by faith before the world confessed your name, O oh Jesus, be forever blessed. Oh, Communion, fellowship divine We feebly struggle They in glory shine Yet all are one Within your great design From earth's wide bounds, from ocean's farthest coast, through gates of realm, streams in the countless host. Singing to the Father, Son, and Holy Read.
Saint Felicity, Saint Agnes, Saint Gregory, Saint Augustine. All you saints of God, holy women and men, be with us on our journey to the kingdom. Saint Athanasius, Saint Basil, Saint Martin, Saint Benedict, Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, Saint Francis Xavier, Saint John Vianney, Saint Catherine, Saint Teresa, Saint Martin de Porres, Saint Elizabeth Seton, all holy men and women. 
Francis of Assisi, Ignatius Loyola, John the Twenty Third, George MacLeod of Scotland, all preachers of the Gospel of Christ. Saints of God in glory, be with all. Benedict, Bernard of Clairvaux, Julian of Norwich, John of the Cross, Teresa of Avila, Elizabeth Ann Seton, all women and men of prayer. George, Patrick, David, Columba, Kevin, 
Bridget, Margaret, Aidan, Bede, all saints of these islands. Saints of God in glory, be with us, rejoice with us, in praise with us, and pray with us now. Chief Seattle, Mahatma Gandhi, Andrei Sakharov, Dorothy Day, William Wilberforce, and others who acted against injustice. Everlasting death. May God save us by His coming among us, by His death and rising to new life, by His gift of the Holy Spirit. Lord, hear the prayers of your saints.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Our Lady's Church uh, here in Ekham for our Sunday morning Mass on this beautiful feast of all the saints. It is the, it's the family feast. It's the feast of that vast, innumerable family of God that extends across the centuries. The saints are our sisters and our brothers. And together with them, we form one piece. We are one family. The fact that they are uh, no longer in this life, but are enjoying life in its fullness with God doesn't mean to say that we have become uh, separated or there is a barrier between us. In fact, we trust that their prayer uh, for us helps us on our journey. The tradition comes because there are those saints who we all know and who we um, remember, we honor throughout the liturgy in the course, the passing of the year. Uh, but those also whom, as Pope Francis often speaks, who are much closer to us uh, and who have shown us God's love and God's kindness, have helped us to know Christ, to love Christ, who are amongst the saints. And those can be our own parents, grandparents, uncles, aunties, maybe teachers in school, all those who, perhaps even without any sense of particular faith of their own, have enabled us to catch a glimpse of the loving and the tender heart of God. And so we give thanks to God today for all those in whom God's grace has been effective, God's grace has been collaborated with in the lives of our sisters and brothers. And this saint's feast always, he always marks the beginning of the month of November. So welcome, welcome, wherever you are, are joining us from. Our candles are, are lit, and we have in front of the altar our November book of remembrance in which the names have been placed of those of your loved ones whom we've asked, you've asked us to pray for in a particular way uh, throughout this, this month of November. And so Mass this morning is being offered for all the people of the parish, and then Baiju asks prayers for his mother Elsie. Elsie died over the summer. Anne asks prayers for uh, Helen Kidoff. Helen died uh, last Sunday, aged 93. Anne remembers that Helen always made space for her at the family table. Uh, and later on would introduce Anne as her adoptive daughter. And so we pray with confidence for Helen, one of those who showed God's love and kindness will herself now have been welcomed to the table of God's children in heaven. Sharon asks prayers for Anne, who has been very poorly. Anne asks prayers for someone celebrating their ninth birthday today, but someone who even at that tender age is finding life hard and feeling low in these unusual days. As we enter into another lockdown this week, we pray for all those who will be affected and for all those who will continue working and serving alongside the NHS staff and people who work in care homes, remember teachers, and all who work in education, remember those who will keep our shops and supermarkets open, those who collect our recycling and our refuse, all those who keep essential services on the road, often unseen, unthanked, and indeed unrewarded. And remember also those who've asked prayers for their private intentions. So on this beautiful day, gathering all of these intentions together, we remember that we are in Christ Jesus, loved beyond all measure. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us 
to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you, for which we earnestly long, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I, John, saw another angel rising where the sun rises, carrying the seal of the living God. He, he called in a powerful voice to the four angels whose duty was to devastate land and sea. Wait before you do any damage on land or at sea or to the trees until we have put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Then I heard how many were sealed, 144,000 out of all the tribes of Israel. After that, I saw a huge number, impossible to count, of people from every nation, race, tribe and language. They were standing in front of the throne and in front of the Lamb, dressed in white robes and holding palms in their hands. They shouted aloud, victory to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels who were standing in a circle round the throne, surrounding the elders and the four animals, prostrated themselves before the throne and touched the ground with their foreheads, worshipping God with these words. Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and strength to our God for ever and ever. Amen. One of the elders then spoke and asked me, Do you know who these people are, dressed in white robes, and where they have come from? I answered him, You can tell me, my Lord. Then he said, These are the people who have been through the great persecution, and they have washed their robes white again in the blood of the Lord, Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
A reading from the first letter of St John. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children. And that is what we are. Because the world refused to acknowledge him, therefore it does not acknowledge us. My dear people, we are already the children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he really is. Surely everyone who entertains this hope must purify himself, must try to be as pure as Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill. There he sat down and was joined by his disciples. Then he began to speak. This is what he taught them. How happy are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy the gentle. They shall have the earth for their heritage. Happy those who mourn, they shall be comforted. Happy those who hunger and thirst for what is right, they shall be satisfied. Happy the merciful, they shall have mercy shown them. Happy the pure in heart, they shall see God. Happy the peacemakers, they shall be called sons of God. Happy those who are persecuted in the cause of right, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Some years ago now, when such things were still possible, um, I was on holiday in Florence, and um, in the course of the wandering around and seeing the sights and admiring the great, beautiful works of art, uh, we went to the, the former Dominican uh, friary. I think it's San Marco and uh, wandered around the cloister, as you do, um, and then headed upstairs um, to the um, area where the, the cells of the friars um, were located. And uh, it was a great big wide staircase, and there were two flights to this, so we went up one flight and then turned to the left to go up the second flight. And there on the wall, the top landing, um, we would have said, I think, when I was was growing up, was um, the painting of the Annunciation by Fra Angelico. It's an image that I've been familiar with uh, probably since I was a, I was a boy. Uh, it occurs pretty much, much everywhere. But to see the original, to see it in its beauty and its size, 
and in its context really struck me. I was, yeah, I suppose struck dumb in the middle of all these tourists wandering up and down and round and about. Something in, in that image kind of touched me. Um, and so I began then to, to wander around the cells where the, the friars had lived. Um, I suppose with that experience kind of lodged in my, in, in my heart. And then as we went from, from cell to cell, and perhaps you, you may have been there, perhaps you, you've, seen, you've seen these things for, for yourselves, that in each of the cells was another painting by Frangelico, always of the, the crucifixion. So while we might have a crucifix on the wall, there were frescoes painted onto the wall in each of the, of the friar's cells. It struck me how in each one of those, the image of Christ was always that of a young man. And I suppose in a culture where people died young, um, they wouldn't have that sense of someone needing to be, to be old. But I asked myself the question, I suppose, um, what must it have been like to live day by day whenever you got out of bed in the morning, began your morning prayers, or when you said your night prayers, before you got into bed at night and, and blew out the candle, to have that beauty before you, to see that beauty morning and noon and night. And perhaps, I mean, I have no way of knowing, perhaps he was um, just matter of fact. Oh, that's Brother Angelico. He paints things, you know. Our religious communities aren't always good at um, praising the works of their, their brothers uh, in the community. Sometimes entirely the opposite happens. But by any scale, I think... Each one of those is a remarkable, stunning, beautiful work of art. And one would like to think that being able to live in the presence of that beauty might have its own effect on us as we, or as they, strove to follow in the footsteps of, of Jesus Christ after the example uh, of, of St. Dominic in that, in, that particular, in that particular case. That experience always comes to mind to me when we have this, this, this reading, this second reading that we've just heard um, proclaimed from the first letter of St. John. And I won't say I've understood it, but it comes back to me as something to be, be pondered. My dear people, John writes, we are already the children of God. That's a statement of of fact. We're not in the process of becoming. We aren't on the way to being. We are already the children of God. And that is by God's gift, not because of any merits of ours, anything that we've done. It's simply the truth. Like we are surrounded by the air that we breathe. The air that we breathe isn't there because we've done anything. It is just simply there. So we are already the children of God. But what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. We don't know. And again, that's another simple statement of fact. We don't know how we will be when we come to be, to be with God. But then, John says, all we know is that when it is revealed, so when that moment comes, we shall be like him. We shall be like God. Because, and this is the point that keeps striking me, because we shall see him, we shall see God as God really is. 
And something in the seeing will be the power that transforms us. The beauty of who God is will change us to be, I suppose you might say, visibly what we already are. That we become visibly the children of God who we already are. So perhaps that thought might help us uh, in the week that lies ahead and in the days that lie ahead. And these are going to be tough days, again, in all kinds of ways. And God help us is probably going to put further wedges down the middle of um, the middle of society, which it seems already so, so fractured in so many ways. But that perhaps when we see people, even those that we find it hard to get on with, uh, or hard even to see um, on the television screen or whatever, we can try to, to hold to that vision that we are already the children of God. To see that in ourselves where we find it hardest, I think, sometimes to see that presence. It's easier to believe it of others than it is to believe it of ourselves, but it is true of each one of us. And also of those uh, amongst whom, amongst whom we, we live and move, and love and serve. That we are, as we're going to say in just a few seconds now, that we believe in the communion of saints. That we are a part of that communion, which is made visible in our communion at the, at the Eucharist. But with all the saints of all times, all those who have lived out on a day-to-day -day basis what it means to be a child of God, a beloved son, daughter, and child of God. And may the saints pray, not just with us, but to pray for us as we follow our journey to that moment when we shall see him as he really is, and we shall become like him, because we can see. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Read, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So now we... Bring our, our prayers to God. We pray for the church on earth. May the saints in heaven be an example for all Christians that may they may serve God in the way he wishes. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for world leaders and all in government, that they might always put the needs of the poorest and most vulnerable first. May God grant them the wisdom to make good decisions for the good of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those in need, especially those who are lonely or struggling to buy food at this time. 
May God provide for all their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those who are sick and those who care for them. May they find comfort and strength in God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who have died, especially as we enter the month of November. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We join our prayers together with Mary as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full, full of, of grace, the Lord, Lord is with, with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. So perhaps as we said so at the beginning we pray for those in, in education, we might spare a prayer today also for all the staff and the students at All Saints, um, our Catholic secondary school here in York, that they will have all the blessings of the feast. Loving God, hear all the prayers that we make today in faith and with confidence that we are your children and that Christ is our Lord and Saviour, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. This week's collection at the Parish House of donated food and other essentials was probably the biggest we've ever had for the food bank operated at Our Lady Queen of Martyrs School. Some two dozen bags and boxes were taken to the school where other donations have also been made. This half term, when some have chosen to overlook the poorest children in our society, you, the people of Our Lady's Parish, have stood in solidarity with those in need. As we hear in Matthew 25, God will not forget your compassion to the hungry. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was ill, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Thank you. Sisters and brothers, let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. Today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, 
where the great array of our sisters and brothers already gives you eternal praise. We hasten eagerly towards her as pilgrims, advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed on those exalted members of your church, through whom you give us, in our frailty, both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Terence Patrick, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The letter to the Hebrews says that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Nefos Martyrol, those who have given witness to Christ in their lives. We're surrounded by the saints. And whenever we pray, most especially when we pray the prayer of the Eucharist together, we are gathered with that whole company of heaven by the power of God's Holy Spirit. So surrounded by that great cloud of witnesses and at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we then dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and who reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away our sins and the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. So we pray together the act of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you in holy communion, please come anew into my heart. I unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be parted from you. Amen. Petra. 
more Saint Felicity. Saint Agnes. Saint Gregory. Saint Augustine. Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland through Christ our Lord. Amen. So thank you once again for joining us for, for our morning Mass here today on this Feast of, of, of All Saints. Um, this Mass, as I said at the beginning, was offered for the people of the parish, and the Mass this evening at five o'clock is being offered for uh, Bernard Morrissey. Masses throughout the week are being offered for the Holy Souls. Um, 
There isn't normally a Mass on, on, on Monday, because Monday's my, my day off. But I will be saying Mass tomorrow, because it is All Souls Day. Uh, so I'll be remembering especially uh, the deceased members of our parish community, and in particular, those who've died over uh, the, last, the last year, some of our um, much-loved uh, members of the family um, have been called home to the Lord. So we remember them in a particular way in our prayer and those who mourn, those who grieve. One or two notices um, for you. Um, I imagine if you're on line by internet that you've picked up a copy of the newsletter, but um, um, the uh, first item there was uh, to ask prayers for Anna and Giles who hope to be married next Saturday in the Bar Convent. Uh, there was a lot of telephoning going around the place uh, yesterday and um, they managed to bring the wedding forward to Tuesday. Uh, so that will be happening on, on Tuesday afternoon. They'd already postponed their wedding more than once. So uh, happily we'll be able to um, celebrate that together. Uh, at the Bar Convent, uh, everybody was able to move the dates. So uh, pray for Anna and for Giles on this important day. Um, there's a note there about the, um, also about the church roof. I know it seems as though um, nothing is happening. It certainly feels at times as if nothing is happening and that we're going from week to week and month to month with no signs of progress. There is work taking place. Uh, and there were people in, again, looking at the, uh, at the roof um, this week. So, um, yeah, as soon as I know anything more um, definite, believe you me, you'll be the first, uh, the first to know. Uh, as we know, we go into lockdown again on, from just after midnight on, on Thursday morning. Um, and one of the um, decisions the government has made is that places of worship um, can remain open for private prayer. Uh, but... Uh, cannot be used for public worship. And it seems to me uh, entirely right um, that we put the needs and the health of our sisters and brothers first, uh, ahead of our, indeed, our right to gather for worship. Um, but sometimes rights have to be tempered by responsibilities and our responsibility that each one of us has for the common good. Um, mass this evening will take place as normal. Uh, at five o'clock. I'm unsure um, while it is legally possible to celebrate Mass uh, on Wednesday, I'm unsure um, about what to do quite about that, so I want to consult, I want to consult in particular uh, Marek, who's chair of our uh, parish pastoral council. Um, but if you have booked in for Wednesday, then if there's any change, we will let you know about that, and, and we do know already um, that the, the Mass for the Diocesan Ministry to the LGBT community uh, won't be taking place next Sunday, uh, but hopefully we'll gather again uh, in December if that seems that seems possible. So thank you again for your ongoing love and support. Thank you again uh, for joining us for Mass. I hope the rest of the day and indeed the week that lies ahead uh, treats you gently. There is the usual um, tea and coffee uh, online. Um, after Mass, if you want to, to join, join for that. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's one you all can sing with us when the saints go marching in.
folks, everybody sing. Now when the saints go marching in, now when the saints go marching in, yes, I want to be in that number. I when the saints go marching in, sing it again. When the saints marching in, now when the saints go marching in, yes, I want to be in that number. I when the saints go marching in, ah, oh, y'all sing pretty out there. Joe Darling, boy. Beautiful audience out there swinging with us. On behalf of Jewel Brown, Billy Kyle, Joe Daringsburg, Summer Young, Billy Crook, Danny Barcelona, little Filipino boy on the drums, little Arabian boy, that's my old. We are very happy to have swung this number for you folks. It's cutting out time now. Before we cut out from here, let's take them saints on down one more time. Now I win the saints. Whoa, boy. When the saints are Yes, I found the in that number. Say 